thank you because we can go just home today because we have heard you we have felt your presence in this place but father as we open the bible and as we meditate on your word i just pray that your holy spirit can keep on working on us this is your church these are your children they have come to this place because some of them are tired some of them need a miracle some of them have been fighting with sin and and they feel like they can't keep on coming or going anymore and some of us father are here asking you for a miracle in our lives so i want to thank you for your presence and please keep on being with us today in jesus name we pray amen may be seated I, I want to share with you guys a message that I I've been having in my heart for a long time but I um, I really did it and I just want to share three things about the story of this of this man that we often don't hear him that much in those stories so first i want to see if i can play a video that is in there and let's see if it works it won't work no all right so Second Samuel 23:20 20 says, "However, uh, there was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kassel. He did many heroic deeds, which include killing two champions of Moab. And another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it." So I'm going to read the last part again. Because I don't know if you guys miss it or not, but this is not something common. And I'm a very scary person. Now, I'm scared of rats. <laughs> I'm scared of bugs. I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of pretty much everything. <laughs> but listen to this. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and kill it so today as we story uh, study this story i'm gonna be focusing on three things number one i want to focus on the person that we're talking about and his name is benaiah and this is very interesting because in ancient times you know they usually choose your name uh not because they saw you they saw your name in a in a movie not because, you know, there was uh, an actor, a famous actor, and then they're like, oh, I like this actor. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name my son like an actor. So my name is Williams. Okay? Is that common for you guys? Last name. Last name. That's a last name, right? So when I was back in Guatemala, you know, they used to, uh, you know, pass lists at school and say Williams, and then uh, here I am. And then I'm uh, like, oh, that's a very cool name. That's nice. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a special. But then I came to the States when I was 16 years old, and then I went to school, and then they also were passing lists, and then like, uh, Williams, and then and the, the teacher will say, is this your first or your last name? <laughs> yeah. So and then I started asking myself, is this a cool name or not? So I started asking my family, why do I have uh, my name with an S and not with an M? And so I started asking questions and I asked my mom. And then my mom went something like this. Well, your dad used to work in a painting company back in Guatemala. They used to sell paints. Can you kind of remember? <laughs> So thanks God I don't 
have Sherwin Williams as my name. <laughs> I only have Williams. But you see, my dad didn't think about uh, his son bearing a cool name or a name that would mean something for him. Or just it meant that he, you know, was working in that company. But back in ancient times, names mean a lot. Names bear your purpose. Names bear what God wanted to do with you. So names were very important. So yeah, I kept that in my, in my mind. So I named my sons. My first son's name is Vitali. He bears the name of his grandpa back in Ukraine. But his name means energy. It means life. You know, it's, as my first son we wanted to have something with life. So I was like, yes, let's name him like that. So I have a second, uh, I had a second son and his name is Matthias in English. We call him Matthias in Espanol, which means the chosen one. Because we choose to have another son. So we're like, yes, we're going to name him Math Matthias. And then we had another daughter and we named her Yana, which means God is gracious. Because believe it or not, we didn't want to have any more kids. And one day my <laughs> wife decided to make a prayer and say, I want a daughter. And now we have a daughter in our home. You see, Ben and I, means God has built up. And I like the fact that it's not that God is, that God will build up in his case. In his case, it's God has built up. God worked in his life. He's, he's already built up. And I don't know if you have lost sight of your purpose. I don't know if sin has put you in a place where you no longer see the purpose in your life. I don't know if your mistakes, if your decisions, if your choices have put you in a place where you no longer see the purpose for your life. And you're wondering this morning, why am I here for? Why do I come to church? Why am I seven day Adventist? Why do I keep believing in God? I don't know if the devil has put doubts in your mind and now today you're here and you're wondering why do I keep coming to church? It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like the right place. It doesn't feel like God is answering my prayer. It feels like God is destined. Let me tell you something. God is working on you. And the fact that you're here, the reason that you're here is because God loves you. And he has a purpose for your life. So stop wondering whether God has a purpose for you or not. You do have a purpose. And the fact that you're here is telling you right now you have a purpose in God. So you see, Beniah knew his purpose. And even though we don't know much about him, there's like three or five verses in the Bible about him. You can read them afterwards. And you'll you find out that he became one of the greatest warriors at the side of the greatest king in Israel, David. As a matter of fact, the Bible verse that we read is, is within that context. David is about to die, and they're remembering the greatest warriors for David. I said, how did he end up in there? And this is a second thing that I want to share with you guys. Because in a snowy day, he did what he was supposed to do. All right. And I'm going to start with this in this part. How many of you like snow? All of you work, in, work inside. You don't work in construction. <laughs> you IT, you're doctors. <laughs> Accountants. But you don't work outside. Because if you will work outside, you will not like snow. But when we talk about seasons in life, do we portray summer as a bad season in our life? Do we portray spring as a bad season in our lives? What's the bad season? Winter. Why? Because it's cold. Nothing grows in, in winter, right? Well, as a matter of fact, here in Virginia Beach, you, you know that nothing goes, is going on in wintertime. Nobody comes to Virginia Beach in wintertime. 
So you see, it's a hard season. The writer wants to let us know that it's a hard season because it's a snowy day. And you know, I grew up in Guatemala. And back in Guatemala, we used to have one pair of shoes for everything. I mean, that pair of shoes, we will have to take it to school. We will play soccer with that pair of shoes. We will go to church with that pair of shoes. And I put, we only have one pair of shoes for everything. Little did I know that you needed special shoes in winter time. So I came to the States. I remember I came in January 1997. It was cold. I came to Fall Church. And everyone was talking about snow. And you know when you, you're back in Latin America and you hear about snow, you're like, yeah, I want to see snow. <laughs> and why, one week passes by, the other one, the third one, and, and the fourth week, the snow is coming. I didn't know that you use special shoes to go outside to play with the snow. I use the shoes that I always used to go in the snow. I play like 20 minutes and then I started to feel something very wet inside my shoes. And I did not like snow anymore. <laughs> it was cold. It was wetty. It was painful. This was a hard season for this man. What do you do when you go through a hard season in your life? What do you do when you don't no longer want to pray? What do you do when you don't have faith? What do you do when you don't want to come to church? What do you do when you raise up your kids at church and they're no longer at church? As a matter of fact, they don't want to know nothing about God. What do you do when the reality of life is telling you that it's not worth it to keep on trusting God? What do you do when you have a hard season in your life? When there's a snowy day in your life, what do you do? But the story of today is teaching us that if you go through a hard season in your life, just keep on doing what you have to do. So said this man could have stayed at home and cry and get depressed and everything, but he decided to go outside because God has been built in him up. I want to remind you today you have a purpose in God. So when a hard season comes in your life, you keep on doing what you have to do. Keep on praying. Keep on showing up at church. Keep on having faith. Keep on doing what you have to do. Because sooner or later, you're going to meet the God Almighty. Amen. Keep on doing what you have to do. I know, I know we live in, a, we live in hard times. I know. I know some of us get anxious. I know some of us get depressed. And listen, hard seasons, difficult moments, there's no way they come in different shapes. I, some of us are dealing with, with our marriage. And our marriage is falling apart. And we don't know how to manage that hard season in our life. Now some of us are dealing with, with mental health issues, depression, anxiety. We don't know what to do. Some of us are, are fighting with the hard season of our, of our economical life. Because we've been making so many bad decisions and we don't know what to do now. And some of us are, you know, fighting against sickness. And some of us are just fighting against sin. And all of us are in a hard season of our life. Just keep on doing what you have to do. There is no other formula. And you know, this is very funny because we as Christians and we are Seventh-day Adventists, we want to come and, oh, what's something new, Pastor? What can I do? Tell me, how can I solve this? And you know what? The same remedy that was years ago is the same remedy that we need today. Pray, study your Bible. 
and share your faith. There is nothing new, family. Just let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basics. Pray. You know, there's moments in my life when I, I feel anxious. Because this is what life is. There are things that are out of my control and I don't know what to do. You know what helps me calm myself down? Prayer. You know what helps me see hope in the future? Prayer. And you know what helps me have peace in my heart? Prayer. Family, if you're going through a hard season, pray. If you're going through a hard season, study your Bible. There is hope in there. So if you're going through a hard season, just do what you have to do. Just do what God has called you to do. And number three, he, the Bible says that he chased a lion and killed it. So can you just try to recreate the story with me? So it was a hard season. It's snowing outside. It's cold. You know, maybe there's wind. He doesn't have a comfy house like us. And he has to go outside because, you know, that's part of his job to go outside. So he's putting, hopefully, his special shoes because he's not like Pastor Ovalle. They only had one. He has different shoes for winter time. All right, he's getting outside, and then it's, it, it, he's walking, you know, to do what he has to do. And all of a sudden, he, he saw a lion on his way. I don't know if you ever have had this opportunity to saw a lion on your way. Well, you know, I see raccoons in my way, and I run away from them. <laughs> but let's pretend you, one day you're out there, and then you see a lion. How do you think the story will end? <laughs> let's say you're a Hollywood producer, and you're making a movie. All right, and there's a lion, and there's a man. There's a lion and Pastor Ovalle. Who will win? <laughs> you don't have faith in me, right? You can see <laughs> Well, you see, the lion, Benaya, and then I don't know what happened because the Bible doesn't tell me. All right, I don't know. He looked at the lion. He made, he made this mean face to the lion. He roared to the lion. I don't know what he did. But the Bible said that he was chasing the lion. But listen, listen, listen. Let's say one day, you know, I get up on my bed and I have this uh, ounce of courage, right? And I face the lion. And I do the ah, roar to the lion. And I, got, I get really mad. And the lion see my red face. And the lion run, runs away. What do you think I'm going to do next? <laughs> I'm going to go to the other side. I am not running the lion. But the Bible says that this guy not only scared the lion, but he chased the lion. But let's say I got... Two ounces of courage that day. And I also, you know, chased the lion. And the lion fall into a pit. What do you think I'm going to do after the lion is in the pit? I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to, you know, buy I'm going home. But the Bible said that this guy not only chased the lion, but when the lion was in the pit, he threw himself in the pit. And he killed the lion. And I was just wondering, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> just go home. I mean, what's, what's up with the lion? <laughs> Lions are nice. <laughs> well, of course, this is a spiritual lesson. And I was trying to think why, why, why he was doing that. And then I, there is a quote from Ellen G. Y. from a Step to Christ that came to my mind that I want to share with you guys today. And a Step to Christ says like this, what we do not overcome will overcome us and work out our destruction. So the reason why I think Venaya chased the lion and went down to the pit and killed him is because he thought, 
I'm getting out of my house tomorrow. And the lion is going to be here tomorrow waiting for me. So I have to deal with him right now, today. Because if I don't deal with him today, he will come back tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow. Family, deal with your anxiety. Deal with your depression. Deal with the lack of faith. Deal with your spiritual life. Because if you don't deal with it today, it will come back tomorrow. And if you don't overcome, it will overcome you and will destruct you. So today, many of us need to deal with a lot of things. And God is talking to us today, this morning. And there is something you need to give to God today that is, dest- that is destroying your relationship with him. I don't know what it is, but you do. There is a sin that is between you and God. You know, I was talking to a young lady this week, and then she's going through a lot of stuff. She's 21 years old. And she kept on asking me, pero, Pastor, what do I need to do? Pastor, what do I need to do? And you know, I'm not this type of pastor. That I believe that I don't have to tell people what to do. They have to discover with Jesus what they need to do. Because if I tell them what to do, I'm, I literally tell them how I will solve that problem. And they need to discover how they solve their own problems. Because God has given us that ability. So he, she was pushing me and pushing me. And then I was like, listen, I know you know what you need to do. And she was like, yeah. And she started crying. And I know it might be hard. And I know you might just want me to tell you the opposite way or the thing that you want to hear so you can, you know, feel comfortable. But I know you know what you need to do. Because God is talking to you. Because God is leading you. It's just that you're hearing so many people. It's like you're asking so many advices. It's like you're going to so many places that you don't allow God to keep on talking to you so he can keep on leading you. But you know what you need to do. And if you don't know what you need to do, today, I want to encourage you to take some time in solitude and listen to what God wants to tell you. So remember, today, You have a purpose in God. You have a purpose in God. Number two, hard seasons are coming, whether you want it or not. Okay? What do you do in your hard seasons? You have to do what you have to do. So keep on praying, keep on studying, and keep on sharing your faith, even though if you don't feel like it. And number three, deal with what you're struggling with. Because whatever you don't overcome, it will overcome all of us, or it will come you, and will destroy you. So today we have a special song. And our, as our guys prepare to have this special song, I want to make an appeal for you. I want to ask you, that if you feel that God is calling you to leave something in the altar today, if there is a sin If there is a problem, if there is an issue that you need to leave today in the altar of God and say, God, I'm dealing with this. I've been dealing with this sin for the past 20, 30 years. You know I cannot win it. You know I lack strength to deal with this. And if you want to bring it to Jesus today in this morning and say, Jesus, here I am. Take it. Make a difference. I'm going to encourage you to come up front so we can pray together. And why is it important for you to make a decision? Because small decisions can open big doors for miracles. Small decisions. And I'm going to tell you one small decision that I did. All of us, or many of us are in social media. I just fell two, three weeks ago that some some of my social media was distracting me a lot. 
and it was making me very anxious so I deleted the app and I went to this retreat and I said God I just want to I just want to meet I want to meet you this this weekend and I'm going to tell you something that is small decision that I made God show up and told me I'm here for you so the decision that you're going to make today this is a small decision that come up from God is going to use it to show you that he is here for you and that he's going to help you to go through any storms of your life so as you hear this music open your heart to Jesus Take me back to the garden Lead me back to the moment I heard your voice Take me back to communion Lead me back to the moment I saw your face And it was all so simple it was easy to love And no space between us It was easy to trust Cause you are closer, closer than my skin And you are in the air I'm breathing in. Here's where the dead things come back to living. I feel my heart beating again. It feels so good to know you. the garden here in the place I find you close and this is communion here in the place I'm fully known and yours all so simple you're so easy to love
Here's where the bad things come back to living. I feel my heart beating again. It feels so good to know you are my friend. Amen. I'm pretty sure you heard the voice of God this morning. And He's been talking to you hard. And I'm going to encourage you today. If you would like to see greater miracles in your life, would you like to come up front so we can pray together? If there's something you need to leave in the altar today, bring it. Bring it today. Bring it today. God is here today with us. He's among ourselves because He loves us. Because you're important unto Him. And maybe, just maybe, the devil has been telling you stop going to church, don't be a hypocrite. You don't deserve to come to church. Maybe the devil is telling you lies today. I'm here to remind you that God loves you. And you do have a purpose in God. So come up front. Do your part and God will do the rest. And he's going to show up and he's going to show up big. And you're going to be able to chase lions. To kill lions in the name of Jesus. And you're going to be able to overcome your sins, to overcome your anxiety, your depression, your lack of faith. You're going to be able to do everything that He has promised in your life, just if you believe. And if today, you dare to believe, He's going to come and do the impossible in your life. I have seen it so many times in my life. And he's going to do it again in your life. So let us pray. Father, how good it is to be in your presence. How good it is to feel and sense that you're here with us. And just the fact that you're here with us, Father, it makes us feel unworthy. But at the same time, it makes us feel good. Because you're reminding us that you love us there's a lot of people in this place facing different type of storms in their lives today we want to chase our lions and kill them but we're not gonna be able to do it by ourselves so we ask for your Holy Spirit we ask for your presence we ask for you thank you for being with us today Please, a special blessing for those who come, who came up front to either to leave something in the altar or to ask for forgiveness or to ask for a miracle. Please answer their prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.